Hello and happy Tuesday, which means it is time for another episode of LHR Minis. And this is season one, episode number four. Today on LHR Minis, we have three different products for you. Two of which being of the lighted, colorful variety, and one of which being a sort of manual type toy. It is an old school um, toy, something that came out originally before I was even in existence. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this episode. Uh, first, we have the USB laser light. Uh, more specifically, it says it's a Starry Night USB laser light made by uh, Electronic Necessities. It has four different cycles apparently, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. It has an adjustable lens, and it creates different lighting effects. So, assumedly, the lens is somewhere up there, and you move this thing left and right to adjust different patterns. It is fairly short, but it looks uh, pretty durable. Uh, the cable is actually like metal, so it's not uh, like a regular plastic wire coating and a USB hookup. So you can put it in your car or you can put it, you know, anywhere that has a USB hookup pretty much. I don't suggest looking straight into this thing because after all, it is a laser just like any other. Um, I also was looking at the package and trying to open it from the side uh, just so I could not mess the package up and I ended up doing that anyway. So what I did was just took a box cutter or an X-Acto knife and cut the plastic out and hopefully this will pop right out. So out of the package, this is what it looks like. You get the laser pointer part equipped with a on-off switch and the lens, along with this rotating uh, top half here that adjusts the different patterns. And another thing to note is that this actually, the uh, laser part, unscrews from the unit and has wires attaching it. So. You don't want to go ahead and pull that off or else the whole thing won't work. You'll sever the um, USB connection to the laser. On this side, we have just a standard USB plug-in. So to test this thing out, I've enlisted the help of this really dusty Insignia brand um, USB hub. What you're going to want to do is take your laser, find the way that the USB plugs in, which is a surprise that it would happen on the first shot. Usually it takes me like 20 tries flipping this thing over and over again. And um, that's installation. Now, all you have to do, since it's USB powered, there's no batteries included or required. Um, all you do is push the button. And um, it's pretty bright. You can see that the thing is on. Even if you can't see the patterns right now, you can see that laser. And I'm not gonna shine that into the camera because that's probably not gonna be good for anyone's eyes. I'm not sure, but I'm also not a doctor. We are now projecting onto the wall in three, two, one, laser. All right, so this I would say would be probably the first setting and um, it's a bunch of dots, which is, you know, a bunch of dots. I'm not saying that's not cool. It's also not not cool, but if you turn the dial, you'll start to see that they will separate into like fractals and move around. And I'm just rotating it slowly uh, towards the uh, left hand side. So counterclockwise, I hope that's right. And if you turn it right, it'll go in the opposite direction. So, you know, if one person is driving and the other person has this pointed up at the uh, ceiling, you can have a rave inside of your car, no problem. And I will say, this is pretty cool. It is strong. The laser pointer is probably a good 15 to 20 inches away from the wall. And of course, um, you know, if you move farther away, the image will get bigger. If you get closer, it'll get smaller. Um, you know, that's how light works. Um, I got this for $5. And I got this at the Dollar Tree because, you know, I'm always there. I think this is a pretty good pickup for $5. I didn't see any other colors besides red, but I mean, you really don't need anything else. I probably wouldn't be using this while I'm driving because I wouldn't be able to see it, first of all. But 
you know, this is something that you could put on a wall or in an office and easily, you know, it'd be great. Giving this to kids is probably a mistake, again, because laser pointers. Most adults can't even handle themselves with laser pointers. I think, again, for $5, this is pretty cool. And let's go ahead and take a look at the next product. The next product we have up is in somewhat relation to the first one in that it is an illuminating product. However, it is not a laser. It is an LED light bar made by a brand called Extreme Lit, which is something that we should all aspire to be. It was $5 at the Dollar Tree, which is five times the dollar that it should be, but it doesn't matter because that's just the way it is at dollar stores nowadays. So we see LED light bar with multi-position base. It has multi-colors and 16 LED color modes. It has a three-foot cord and there is a remote included, which is very nice of them. And we can see here all the colors, all the modes, on and off, and the brightness adjustment. It's a uh, vertical, as seen here, and horizontal, as seen here. Opening the box from the top, immediately we are greeted with the remote. After that, we have the light bar. Nothing else in the box, so we can go ahead and check that. We'll take the light bar out of the bubble wrap. We end up with one manual, one light bar stand, one light bar, and a remote. Pretty substantial, I have to say, that this is a pretty large, fairly large um, light bar. It is all black and matte finish. It's pretty light, but again, not cheap. And you plug in the base either from the side on this slot if you want it horizontally, or if you want it vertically, you place it on the slot on the bottom like so. So the only challenge you will have when setting this up is not knowing the difference between horizontal and vertical. Here is your remote. You have the brightness up and down, on and off, all your reds, all your greens, all your blues, and the variations thereof. With the white light also as an option, you have flash, strobe, fade, and smooth, and this little tab that indicates that there is in fact a battery inside. Again, this unit is, in fact, USB powered just like the other product, so no batteries included, no batteries required. So we're gonna go ahead and bring out the same little USB hub and see if we can't get this thing to start giving off the goods. As you can see, I still have the Starry USB laser pointer plugged in to our USB hub. I also have our light plugged into our USB hub. I do have my uh, filming lights on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off and we'll experience this the way that it was intended to be experienced. So first things first is we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Boom, just like that. And um, I have no idea what color that is. It looks a little different on the camera, honestly, than it does in person. In person, it kind of looks like a really light, really, really light tinted blue. However, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to white. Okay, so. <laughs> I was wrong, it's already on the white setting. So apparently this is the white light. On camera it does appear to be sort of white. In person it's a dim blue, but that's okay, it's pretty awesome. All right, so real quickly, color test. We have red, lighter red, orange, yellow, green. That's actually like a lime green. Standard green, lighter green than that. Aqua, a light blue, very pronounced light blue navy type blue or actually you know what that looks like in person it actually looks like the back of the playstation uh, 4 controller an indigo a violet purple which is not oh there we go a purple and a pink and i apologize because it's not that easy to see on camera as far as looking straight at the light so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna project it onto the wall and you'll be able to see the colors just that much better here we are, white, red, some kind of red orange, 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 lime green, green, mint green, teal, aqua, strong aqua, blue, bluish purple, violet, a lighter violet, and pink, which appears almost purple. Now I'm sure that it would look different when, you know, the back isn't black. If this was a white background, it might look a little different. However, we're also forgetting that there are dimmer settings on this thing, so you can make it dimmer you can also make it brighter. Um, I will also say that it does appear to be flickering a little bit in the camera and at some points it does not do that in person. It's just one continuous stream of light. On to the modes. We have 
and you know there might be some flashing here so I'm gonna go ahead and give a little warning but we have flash very slowly so it's not like a strobe because this is strobe which apparently isn't the same type of strobe light effect it's just more like flickering the lights fade what does fade do fade fades the color slowly in and out while cycling and finally we have smooth which um is just like flash with a smoother animation i will say that the colors are much brighter in person than they are on camera i wish i could do it justice and i probably will try to get more clips of it out to show what it is capable of i think it's also great that they have hookups on the side for your horizontal and your vertical. Um, again, it's very light. It doesn't take up very much desk space and you can easily put it behind anything. It's very slim. I like that it's USB powered and that you don't need batteries. I have a feeling that I could use it in combination with this thing. That might happen. In fact, it'll aid us in our next venture, which is a $5 version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I got this from Five Below, you know, the place that we all know and love so much here on this channel. They have a whole section of board games and tabletop games, and uh, they range anywhere from a dollar to about five dollars. Um, and for any of those that are unfamiliar with Rock'em Sock'em Robots, which most might be, the concept is, is pretty you know, understandable. This is a toy that debuted far beyond my time here on Earth, and I am of reasonable age. The original Rock'em Sock'em Robots, as I understand it, was gigantic. It was also two robots made out of metal beating the ever-loving crap out of each other. This is a more um, travel-sized and economy-type based thing. For $5, you can't go wrong with this. More information on the box, as we can see, the red guy is getting his block, in fact, knocked off. It says, heavyweight championship of the universe. Not even of the world, of the entire universe. Which means, assumedly, that these two robots decapitated every other boxer on Earth and in the universe to fight each other. Battle of the Giants, the fight to the finish. <laughs> oh man, these people have all paid money to watch these two robots kill each other. That's... Mm, harsh. It's two players, suggested for six and up, which is good because I am far beyond six. Um, which is funny because every time now that I think about it, that I go into these stores and I buy these games, people kind of look at me like, dude, aren't you a little bit too old to be playing with games? In which I reply, certainly not. Once again, we're going to open it from the top as we do. We end up with some instructions. Furthermore, inside the box, we indeed have the goods. So here's the deal. We have all the pieces out of the bag. As you can see, we have two robots, we have two stands, we have two levers, and a ring. But before you plug in your robot, you're going to want to choose your side. So you'll see two cutouts for your robot to stand up in, and you'll see two cutouts here for this to slide through. So what you want to do is take your hook, put it through there, and slide it through the hole. At which point, you're gonna take your robot and plug it into the base of your controller stick. Now you wanna take your trigger and this middle part right here has two little tabs that will be accepted right there. And you just pop it in, you know it's good. And there you go. So this is meant for your finger and you hold one side, the opponent holds the other side and that way you have a more stable surface to fight on. Before I go ahead and let these guys pulverize each other, I think we do need some ambiance. So here we are with the main event. We have the laser lights in the back, the LED light going on the strobe and our two contenders in the squared circle, ready to knock each other's block off. Let's go ahead and get into round one of this brutality. 
And here we are, red and blue, going at it for the world title. In fact, it's more than the world title, it is the universal title. These two people have actually murdered countless people while they have boxed in the ring because they are made of solid iron. Now, when they are both matched up against each other, it could be anybody's game, we have no idea. Their best punch is the uppercut because that is all they were programmed to do. That and have their heads pop off and red scores the first knockdown of the fight. Let's go ahead and go to round number two. And miraculously, Blue gets up from that first down. We are here at round number two. Let's see if Blue can get it going. And here we are. The action beginning. A little feints going on here. And Red, stealing the first round, is looking to capitalize and get in on that second round with a second knockdown and end this fight early. Blue looking to turn the tides a little bit. Oh, and Blue gets caught stepping in with an excellent uppercut. And that is two knockdowns for robot number one, which I have not been calling him this whole time. So that's Red Robot. My bad. And hot out the gates. Blue with some feints. Red with some feints. They uh, dance around for a bit. Blue looking a little tentative and some cautiousness there because of, you know, getting his head removed twice. Getting a little bit of a uh, neck lift, if you will. And um, he seems to be moving around a little bit more than he was in the previous two rounds. Maybe finally catching some wind and over that wall, but we will find out in a second. Red with a strong chin. Blue hammering him with a hammer fist straight to the... Oh, and Red takes it three rounds to none. Blue Bot, unfortunately, goes down without even one hit. And, um, you know, that's just the way it is in life sometimes. So before I leave, I do have a few announcements um, that I want to get out before. I wasn't planning on actually making this today and doing it because I had so many things to do this week. However, I decided, you know, I cannot leave people uh, hanging for this week on the minis or on the regular episode, despite whatever I have going on. So, you're welcome. Other than that, um, again, at the end of the season, for both LHR and LHR minis, I'm going to be taking all the products that I have, ranking them, and rating them um, as far as quality, value, um, usefulness, and construction. And that'll be coming up at the end of the season. In regards to random episodes, such as things like the uh, random wheel and, you know, stuff like that, I want to do more of those types of things in the future. Not necessarily just a wheel, but more, you know, those types of things. Um, hopefully you enjoy those. If you do, then I guess I'm not wasting my time. A few more things to mention. I did have some inquiries about people sending me things so that I can review them. I have absolutely zero problems with that happening. If I can build a community here that I can interact with, better yet. Um, I don't have a P.O. box just yet. However, if you know me personally and you want to send me something and I do know you on that level, then it's not a problem. You can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, go ahead and send me a message and I'll figure out how to get those products to me. And last but not least, I do want to thank all the people that watch these, that support me, that enjoy these videos. And if you have comments or suggestions on how I can improve or what you'd like to see more of, then go ahead and please leave me a message or a comment or something like that. And I will read them and I will get back to you. And I'll try my best to make this the best experience that you could possibly have. Another thing I want to say is that um, to all the people that collaborate with me, those that um, are doing music, that uh, I can insert into these videos for promotion reasons or for my outros, my intros, whatnot. Thank you so much to those people. You have no idea how much that helps. However, because these people were so generous as to donate their own material um, to me, I am able to use it and I don't have to worry about the legality of any of that. So that is a huge help. And I want to thank you so much. If you're wondering who does the music currently right now uh, for our first season, for both LHR and LHR minis, the outro song is Serenity Now, Insanity Later by Patterson Costanza, produced by Prop the Producer. Go ahead and check them out. 
they are great people, awesome people, and um, you know, beyond the music, you would like to get to know them. They do so much, it's very interesting, and again, I cannot thank you enough. So with that being said, this is season one, episode four of LHR Minis. Hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you on Friday for LHR. Until then, have a great day. Serenity now, Serenity now. insanity later. I live for the moment. I'm about getting paid, but I'm about getting paid, I'm about getting paid, I'm about getting paid, I'm about getting paid.